Welcome back to my next vlog about technology enhanced instruction. First of all, we're going to go back up to my classroom. First thing we're going to go over today is the questions for the interview of the teachers. Follow me. So this is my classroom. Before we go over today's video, I just want to show you today's sponsor, Perrier. So for my interviews, I used Crown Hill Elementary in Bremerton, which is in Washington State. Many questions could be asked, but I asked 10. The first one was, do you currently have technology in the classroom? Uh, from the three teachers, we had the answer yes from everybody, computers and video screens. Question number two, where does the training come from to use the technology? Three answers, district training, online, and they were self-taught. Question number three was, is there a specific person for issues of technology failure? I would need lots of help because I'm terrible with technology. Their answers were, there is a building tech leader, there's a multimedia specialist and multimedia IT through a work order from the school district. Question number four, did you collaborate with others to achieve the best technology for your class? Their answers were, there is a weekly collaboration amongst the teachers and it's also part of their contract through the school district that they have to have collaboration classes. Question number five, is there a good balance between teacher and student technology to student does there need to be? All of them strongly feel there has to be a good balance. Some overuse it, some underuse it, which was typically the older teachers that have uh, you're so used to doing their old systems, they're not willing to change. Question number six, once technology is in the classroom, is self-learning technique in place? So the answers to that were, no, it's just a tool to meet the goals and practicing skills taught by the teacher. Uh, and students need a relationship to humans. Question number seven, is the cost of technology prohibited in your school? Answers to this were levies have helped. Uh, Crown Hill is a low income school and has been getting the minimum, but local infusion from the school district has really helped. And there are individual grants available, but the teachers have to apply for them individually. Final question number eight, is technology a distraction? If so, is there a preferred option? Not for most students was the answer. The rules are very specific to the use. An example was, if a kid looks out of a window, do they take all the windows out of the classroom? Obviously the answer is no. Okay, so that's that. So hopefully after this course is over and I'm teaching, I'll be prepared because I have my technology checklist. Number one, is there access for all students? Is everyone on a level playing field? Number two, is the time taken to learn the technology worth the time lost teaching? Number three, is there a, pl a plan B when technology fails? Am I so reliant on technology when there is no power or a system goes down do I have something in place? Number four, is technology reaching the standards and goals for the students' individual needs? The kids are over a broad spectrum. Um, am I servicing all of them all at the same time? And the biggest thing to me, is the class already being done by others? Have I collaborated with other teachers? I don't want to reinvent the wheel. There's so much online now. Do I really have to come up with something just a tiny bit different to teach the same things? So the final part of this vlog is my lesson plan and analysis of a lesson plan in technology. The lesson plan was Edblocks, which is beginning coding. This technology class is lasts around two hours. My analysis of it 
This is a second stage coding lesson plan. To be able to complete or teach this, the teacher has to do a three hour class, which allows them to have the blocks from the school district. The great thing is 100% of the kids are engaged in it. There's several levels for each uh, class and experience. They use partners to start with, so there's socialization. Everyone feels successful, they've achieved something. It stirs everyone's imagination. Suddenly a bar graph, barcode, sorry, allows you to turn something left, turn it right, go straight. It just stirs the imagination of what you can do or what you're trying to achieve. And the best thing of all, it encompasses science, math, and reading. I love this idea. Anyway, that's my analysis of this class, and that's the end of this vlog. Thank you very much.